small gap. So much so that a man came to the Messenger of Allah says, ma sha Allah wa ma shi'at. Whatever Allah wills and you will. He said, aja'altani lillahi nidda. Have you made me equal with Allah? Bal ma sha Allah wahda. Nay, but it's whatever Allah wills alone. Only with words. The man was saying, whatever Allah wills and you will, he said, are you making me a rival with Allah? Are you making me equal with, are you making me equal with Allah? Say whatever Allah wills alone. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cursed the Jews and the Christians for taking the graves of their prophets as places of worship. And those who make tawassul today, they teach you when you go to the Masjid al-Nabawi, you go and you face the Qabr. And you say, Ya Allah, inni atawassalu alayka bin Ya Rasulallah, blah, blah, blah. The Prophet ﷺ cursed the Jews and the Christians for this very action. He sent Ali, عنه, he said, do not leave a, an elevated grave except that you level it. And do not leave a statue except that you destroy it. See how he's closing the door of shirk? Any elevated grave, level it. So the people will not build the construction and shrine as the mushrikeen of the, among the Muslims do today. Level it. And don't leave a statue, a picture of some great Sufi, except that you destroy it. Closing the door of shirk. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited that one prays in the graveyard. That one prays in the graveyard or prays in the direction of the graveyard. You see how he's closing the door? Closing the door. Keep your relationship with Allah. Keep your tawheed with Allah. Islam is the deen of tawheed. Don't get anyone else involved, even the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we don't do that, then we will be following the ways of the Jews and the Christians, and the Jews and the Christians continue to innovate until they left belief and became kuffar. Until they left belief and they became disbelievers until the Day of Judgment, until they returned to Islam. And if Muslims continue to do that, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the sa'a will not occur until people of my ummah will worship idols again. The hour will not come until Muslims will worship idols again. He told us and prophesied alayhi salatu salam that this day is coming. Don't be among them. When you want to ask Allah azza wa jal and seek wasila to Allah, you seek it directly through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His names and attributes or through righteous deeds. Or if there's a righteous man which you think, you know, he, Allah will accept his dua, then you ask him to make dua for you. Anything else is unacceptable. We all understand. This is a covenant. We will take with Allah. You got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose to be a muwahid. Nothing to lose to ask Allah alone. The only time you will not lose if you ask Allah alone. If you want to play with, with hot water, then you may burn yourself. If you want to say, well, let me try this innovative one, that's dangerous. So we stick to the Quran and the Sunnah. And we stick to the way of the righteous predecessors. You know, and just beware. Beware that the opposition have a lot of lies. They have fabricated many lies to support their position. For example, they claim, they claim that Imam Shafi'i used to go to the Qabr of Imam Abu Hanifa. And he said, anytime I was facing difficulty, I would go pray there and make dua and seek wasila through him and Allah will remove my problem. Lies against Imam Shafi'i. And the irony is, the, the people who love the tawassul the most are the Hanafis in Madhab. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah had said, he said, I hate that anyone seeks tawassul to Allah except through Allah. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah said, I hate that anyone seeks tawassul through Allah except through Allah, meaning through Allah's names and attributes. So how could Imam Shafi'i, who was a student of Imam Abu Hanifa, go to the grave of his sheikh and seek nearest to him when his own sheikh said that, I don't accept that. And they lie against Imam Malik, that a man came to head, said, oh, shall I, at the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu shall I turn to the Qibla or turn to the grave? He told him, turn to the grave. You know, lies. If you study the chain of narrations, all of them are lies and fabrications. So be careful because when you hear this lecture, you will see people sending you emails with, with the refutation for this. All of it is lies and fabrications. How will you know? Refer to the scholars of hadith. Refer to the scholars of hadith who will tell you which narration is sahih, which is not. I told you already. Two are sahih. And we, we cannot deny that. See, we could have lied. If we were liars as they are, we could say, brother, there, you know, this whole tawassu, there's no sahih hadith. But we didn't. Because there's sahih hadith, even though it's not a Bukhari Muslim, it's Muslim of Imam Ahmad, did we admit it or not? We admit. We admit when the hadith is sahih. And we will deal with it. 
These are the only authentic narrations. Claims against the Sahaba, claims against the Tabi'een, claims against the Imams are lies and fabrications the Sufis came up with and the grave worshippers so they may remain upon their deviant ways. And Allah will hold them accountable for these lies and fabrications on the Day of Judgment. So we ask Allah Azza to guide all the Muslims to the truth and to unite us upon the truth and to help us be muwahidun, those who worship Him alone and, and seek nearness to Him through His names and attributes, through, his, through the righteous deeds which He has blessed us with and nothing else. And none of the innovated ways, Verdi is able to do all things. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa jazakumullahu khayran.